thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time because today I want to talk to you about something that I've observed over the past decades of when I started growing orchids in pots. And I'm going to share these observations with you, especially because we're coming from the angle of not wanting to or having to disturb the orchid for as long as possible while that orchid is growing in the pot. I'm going to start with seedlings, then we'll go to the juveniles, then we'll go with monopodials. We'll talk about divisions as well to position those in pots. We'll discuss a little bit about how rhizome will affect the position in the pot, as well as orchids that grow in clusters. And I will differentiate two different approaches based on organic media growing or inorganic media growing. And everybody that is fortunate enough to be able to slap their orchids on trees and let them do what they want. If you're here watching anyway, well, I appreciate your time. You are the lucky ones because ideally, put your orchids in your trees, leave them be, enjoy the blooms. End of story. You don't disturb them. If they're up in the tree, they just grow and do well. Now, those of us who are less fortunate in our climate and we have to grow orchids in our pots, everybody always says to place the orchid in such a way that the back of the orchid is snug up against the rim of the pot so that the growing point of the orchid has plenty of room to grow into the pot. And by doing that, you don't have to disturb the orchid for many, many years. That all makes a lot of sense. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to share some observations with you. I want to be able to show you some exceptions because sometimes it's not aesthetically pleasing to the eye if we want to take it that way to have an orchid that is teeny tiny tucked up against the edge of the pot and then you have to think about well it's going to grow into the pot but there's no balance let's just say it just looks weird so let me get into what i'm talking about you see my approach to potting up an orchid now is based on how long can i leave the orchid in the pot what size is it? What does the rhizome do? Direction of growth can come from anywhere. So let me start with seedlings. For example, you're trying to grow a seedling on. Seedlings are small, they go into small pots. You see the mistake I made here with this one, if you want to call it that, and I'll get to that, but you see, the mistake with this teeny tiny seedling, I put it up against the edge of the pot, thinking, as we all do, let it grow into the pot, plenty of room in the pot, I don't need to disturb it for years. But, okay, if you're growing in organic media, when you say you won't need to disturb it for many, many years, that is all relevant because a seedling needs different treatment and the media is consistently wet to cultivate it in that small pot. That is the requirement of growing seedlings. So in organic media, you have yourself wet media. You've put your orchid up against the edge of the pot. It looks ridiculous, doesn't it? I mean, anyway, to my eye, it does. So it's up against the edge of the pot, but two or three years down the line, because your organic media was so wet, you have to disturb it anyway. The orchid has not filled the rest of the pot as anticipated. But you have to disturb the orchid because the media has broken down. So in that instance, I would say, based on my observations, just pot it up into the middle of the pot when it comes to seedlings. Now, in inorganic growing, I won't have to disturb this little Cattleya maxima for a very long time because my media won't break down. But I'm left with a pot that looks rather silly. And in future, if I get another seedling like this anywhere else, I'm just going to put it into the middle of the pot and let it do its thing. We're talking years and years and years of being in the pot in inorganic media. This just looks a little bit silly. At this point in time, inorganic growing seedlings, put them in the middle of the pot. It's not like it's going to outgrow the pot very, very quickly. And that's what I did here with my Dendrobium antenatum, a little piece that broke off back in the day when I was potting up the mother plant. I just thought, hey, here we have a seedling. It's going in inorganic media. I don't need to bring it to the back, the piece that I had taken off to let it grow on. It looks so much nicer in the middle of the pot and it hasn't even filled out anything and it won't for many, many years. I don't have to disturb this orchid. Imagine this orchid in organic media and 
The same thing would apply. You can leave a small seedling in the middle of the pot, keep the media nice and wet. Putting it at the edge of the pot won't exactly allow it more time to grow into the pot with such wet media over an extended period of time. And usually seedlings are then grown in sphagnum moss or seedling bark, which degrades very, very quickly. Yes, I'm coming from the angle of aesthetics. Now, those of us that have to grow in pots, isn't that what we're trying to do? grow orchids in pots and make them look aesthetically pleasing. Here you can see a little bit more of a mature seedling of the Cattleya maxima. This piece was in the pot with this one. So here by accident, I had the orchid a little bit more in the pot. This was not the plan, but look, it's been in this pot now, let's see, two years? Yes, two years. And here we are, it's in the middle. It has grown two growths since it's been with me. It is in inorganic media, and yet it still has plenty of room to grow, seeing as it is a seedling. It also looks so much nicer. Now again, if I had pushed it further back, there would be nothing wrong with it, but I'm not really achieving anything, leaving an orchid in a pot if it were in organic media, by pushing it to the back, because once again the media would break down. So I don't know if I keep repeating myself, but what I'm trying to do here is loosen up a little bit the whole thing about my orchid needs to be at the back of the pot and the direction of the growth has to come into the middle. This has worked out pretty well for this Lodigesii hybrid. It's been in this pot since I potted it up back in the day when I got it from the orchid room. And only now is it starting to look normal. The whole thing was a tiny little thing right at the back of the pot, all this bit right here, and it just looked really silly for a couple of years. But now, yes, I'm in Lekka and self-watering. I could leave the orchid in that pot again for another couple of years because, of course, my media won't break down. But that is not the case. Even if you're growing in inorganic media, you need to clean the root ball. You need to put aeration back into the pot. So every two, maximum three years, I go into all my pots and I clean up the root ball and re-establish a form of oxygen exchange in the pot. And that will include this one. Even though I have plenty of space at the front, I have to intervene. So in retrospect, moving the orchid to the edge of the pot did nothing because the front of the pot is still free and it looked very, very silly for several years. There's another thing about all this, what I'm trying to point out is what I've noticed when I was growing in organic media, is that we expect the orchid to move forward they grow very, very slowly, our media deteriorates, and we don't have the four or five years for an orchid to move slowly. This orchid here has developed over two years. Theoretically, I could go another two years, but I can't because I have to address the pot. So why not just put the orchid in the middle, have an even distribution around the pot as well when it comes to media drying off, instead of one side of the pot just being totally saturated all the time. Orchid roots don't grow in an area just because there's space. They will grow wherever they want to. They will grow where they will find space. The first point of call is to go down into the pot and probably just circulate all around the base of the orchid here. As the orchid matures, the roots will move with the subsequent growths. But that doesn't mean that the first two years there's any need for all this space in the front of the pot. Here's another example of a juvenile Cattleya dawiana. Now, imagine if you were taking your seedling and it has gotten ready, you can bump it up to a bigger size pot and you start to remove the seedling bulbs because, well, you know, they're not necessary. You want to create more space in the pot for your orchid to grow on. And then what you do, you've removed the seedling bulbs, You've pushed the orchid to the back of the pot, as seems to be the norm. And then all of a sudden, because you've removed the seedling bulbs back here, an eye starts to swell up because there was a cut. That usually triggers another growing point. Now your orchid is all the way back to the edge of the pot. Now you've got a growth coming here. And goodness me, it's going to get very, very crowded. Now, with my Dawiana, I did not cut the seedling bulbs off, but I positioned her in the middle and she just looks a little bit more evenly balanced in the pot. I have to address this orchid this year because again, she's been in this pot approximately two years and she's grown a lot of roots in the meantime. And the same would be happening with organic growing. As the roots grow, and I say it again, the media will break down. 
the pot has to be addressed not because the orchid fills the pot, but because the media is breaking down. So this whole thing about positioning orchids in the back to allow room for growth is only relative for as long as the media is stable. And here I am growing in inorganic media and I'm still addressing my pots on a two-year, three-year basis. Why not just put the orchid in the middle? If the growth habit of the rhizome permits it, of course, because that's the next point we're going to get to. A very, very long extended rhizome, for example. We can factor in bulbophyllums with that one. I'm going to use my example of the Guarianthe, Guatemalensis. She is a huge orchid. Thank goodness she grows upright, but her rhizome is so long on every single new growth. If you were to push the orchid to the back and you are expecting the orchid to age in the pot, then orchids like these will also produce growing leads from the back especially orchids like these that have been sold as divisions. These are the kinds of orchids that are relatively vigorous and easy to propagate and sell on as divisions. Very rarely do you find them as seedlings and have to deal with them that way. So you're getting a division in, it's got a rambling rhizome, that cut is going to trigger another growing point and yet you're going to push it towards the edge of the pot, allowing for growth to grow into the middle of the pot. First of all, nobody can predict the direction of where that orchid is going to go. So solve the problem and put it into the middle of the pot because then you are safe on all sides for any growing point that may arise. And you have plenty of space for whatever growing point, whatever lead in whatever direction it starts to head off. That also includes catacetinae. And I'm going to approach the subject of cluster orchids when it comes to that. So when it comes to catacetinae, for example, Usually you get seedling bulbs, or you get a set of bulbs that have been propagated from a mature plant. So let's go with the seedling bulbs. You can see the obvious direction of growth because of how the orchid has grown and the structures have increased in size. And you put the seedling bulb against the edge of the pot, and then the orchid grows on. Well, if you're in a situation like me, for example, I don't repot my catacetinae every year. I leave them in the pot, and only once they outgrow their pot do I interfere. And lo and behold, a seedling bulb starts to grow a new growth. Now, I had to interfere with my catacetinae anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. But if I didn't have to, I would now have to interfere because there's a growth appearing from the back of the orchid. Because the older an orchid gets, the more leads it will create, including from the back. So when it comes to us not wanting to disturb orchids, I honestly have to put it out there that from my observations, pushing orchids to the rim of the pot is really not that necessary. The risk of having to intervene in an orchid that has been pushed back, let's go back to the catacetinae, from the angle that you don't repot your catacetinae every year. And you can see the point of growth based on where the cut was for the bulbs that came to you, as opposed to the front. If you have a double cut, what do you do? Where do you start? Your best bet, your safest bet, is pot the orchid up in the middle. Catacetinae bulbs, if not grown as a seedling, are divisions, and they will produce a new growth anywhere around the bulbs that you received. How do you know where to position it? Your safest bet, put it in the middle of the pot and let it grow and fill out the pot from the middle outwards, as opposed to taking the bulbs that you get pushing them against the rim in the hopes that the growth will actually come out where you think it should. It may not. It may come out the back and all of a sudden there's a new growth right up against the rim of the pot and now you will have to intervene the next year just to make sure it doesn't squeeze out another growth with no space to go to. Now I know that this may not be as important to you as it is to me, I might be a little bit more OTT with the visual aspect of my orchids, but from the point of view of not disturbing an orchid for a long period of time, which is the reason why people say, move the back of the orchid against the rim of the pot, it doesn't make any sense, especially if you are growing in organic media. The orchid will never have enough time to fill the space of the pot while growing in organic media, because you are going to interfere anyway prior to that area being filled, seeing as your media is breaking down. Same with inorganic. I'm not banging on about organic growing or inorganic. Pots need to be addressed. Root systems need to be cleaned. So the position of the orchid is there for the two or three years that you're thinking about, and that is not even long-term in an orchid's life. 
If you want long term in an orchid's life, you should think five or six years. And there's no way anybody leaves an orchid in a pot in organic media for five or six years. So I am doing a test with lava rock and some dendrobiums. Here's my dendrobium tetragonum. All right. I have moved it to the back of the pot right here. That's where the little bulb was, anticipating that everything will grow into the pot. So far, I have been pretty lucky. I don't want that stress on myself or anybody. Why do we hope to have to have our orchids grow in the direction that we want to when look at the rhizome, look at the pot. I could have easily put this orchid into the middle. It would have looked much nicer as well. And I wouldn't have had to worry where the next point of growth is coming from. Look at my Lelia harpophila here. You see that? Again, I moved everything right at the edge of the pot here. But is that really necessary? Okay, now I have a growth that's moving out towards the right. You see all this space in my pot here? Look at the rhizome as well. The growing habit. I could have easily put this orchid bang in the middle of the pot. And it would have also looked nicer. And then I wouldn't have to worry where this one is going to head off next. Is it going to go this way, double back on itself? Because it's kind of crowded back here. Look at all this space. It's totally unnecessary. With orchids that have these kinds of growing habits, just put it in the middle of the pot. That is my opinion. I think this positioning orchids right at the edge of the pot and allowing them time to grow in is completely obsolete in many, many cases because we need to interfere with the root ball. The exception being with these guys, I will try and see how long I can keep them in this setup. And I also say with my other Rapiculus Lelias, I'm going bigger with the pot because I'm focusing on the roots and I don't want to disturb the orchids. And I'm trying to anticipate at least six to eight years of the same orchid in the pot. Now, I probably won't be able to do that with my Harpophila if she decides to push a growth out at this end. If I had left her in the middle, I would be resting easy, so to speak. And what about keikis? I hope you can see that. So when you have a keiki, for example, you literally have a seedling when you take it off the mother plant. At the base, I can't pull this out, the roots have grown into the hob material, but the base does not show any indicator of where the growth is going to come out next. So do I put that at the rim? No straight into the middle of the pot and then don't worry about it because who cares? It, it has plenty of room. There will be no obstruction to any new growth growing wherever it grows if it's in the middle of the pot. If you were to mount this one and you were just to put it flat up against a piece of bark, then you might also be risking that the new growth will actually come out exactly where the base of the orchid touches the bark. So ideally in this case, you would want to be able to mount a keiki, let's say at a perpendicular somewhat angle, 45 degree angle, so that you don't run into the problem with a growth growing up against the bark and fetching it out. Let's look at some cluster orchids. I want to show you another example. Look at this. Here we have a Sophronitis cernua and then many, many Rapiculus lalias. And this is what I consider cluster growers. You see, when it comes to new growths, on some of these orchids, you don't exactly know which direction they're going to be heading off into. This one, for example, would prefer to be mounted, but in some climates, we have to pot them up to keep them healthy. So what do you do? Is there a direction of growth? No, you put it in the middle and then it can do whatever it wants and you don't have to worry about it. Same here. Bang in the middle of the pot, wherever it wants to grow. And you know, I have a lead on this side of the orchid now growing in towards the back and I have a lead right here growing in towards what the front no it's in the middle of the pot and this way it can stay there for as long as I don't need to intervene with it small pot as well inorganic media now here we have one for example hmm there we go Lelia biensis okay what did I do I put it up against the edge of the pot okay this was the front growth and of course, the front growth will then produce another growth, but it's heading off sideways. So I could have just put it into the middle, right? Besides the fact that I don't want to be disturbing these orchids for many, many years. So in my opinion and my observation with regards to positioning orchids into pots, put them in the middle. You will be interfering with the pot anyway. You have to. 
That's what, unfortunately, we have to do when we grow orchids in pots. We have to go in and interfere, even though we would prefer not to. This applies to any rhizome, any growing habit, in the middle of the pot, let it do its thing, and it also looks much, much prettier. So what we don't see very, very often is two leads of cluster orchids that grow in opposite directions. Of course, this is a little bit of a tough one because everybody says they need to be in smaller pots. Well, you can see that my pot is not exactly small, but that is again, I'm going with the root system and I want to encourage that to have space and I don't want to be bothering this little Lelia Regina, but I have two directions of growth. And in this case, I took a square pot and put it diagonally into the middle of the pot. And yeah, well, we're coming up against the edge. I think I've got another year or two depending on where it wants to shoot out the next growth. This is the latest growth, same as in the front here. I'm very, very lucky that the next growth came out here. So this is just to show you that cluster orchids, as I like to call them, there is no rhyme or reason where the orchid will grow a new growth, especially as many, many orchids in this kind of category do not show eyes at the base that we can even anticipate where they're going to come out next. And here we have a classic example of, I've got no indication of where this orchid is going to bring out its next growth, even though this is, of course, its latest growth. But then we have to look a little bit closer because they do funny things. So they may not have any eyes, but you can see that bump coming right here. Out of nowhere. There wasn't an eye there a couple of months ago. But then there's just a small little bump. And it'll be heading off in this direction if nothing goes wrong. So let's look into this situation with a monopodial orchid. Not just Phalaenopsis, but you know, your Arades, your small Vandas. That makes perfect sense. We put them in the middle of the pot. The one thing, though, that I didn't do correctly in previous years was to stake them, especially the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, even though right now we are looking at a novelty hybrid, a summer bloomer. But you see, this orchid was potted up in the middle of the pot many, many years ago and see how it's moved its way across as it grew on the stem and increased in size. The weight of it is starting to move it and lift it out of its own pot as well. Now, summer bloomers, of course, are a little bit more of a different category with regards to being able to stake them and hold them back a little bit. So eventually, this is what they will do for the most part. My Chatelade here, Corner Survey variety Chatelade, has more of a complex hybrid growing habit, as in it itself is growing upright in the pot. And that is fine. That can also be in there indefinitely. So monopodials, it makes more sense to keep them in the middle. But I would highly recommend to find a really secure method of staking at least the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids. Personally, I have not found a solution to avoid this with our summer bloomers or novelty hybrids. Another example where we can throw it out the window when it comes to putting up orchids right at the edge of the pot and let them grow into the pots is orchids with multiple directions of growth. Multiple directions of growth? You're not going to be putting anything up against the edge of the pot. So back into the middle it goes, right? So I hope that you see how often the principle of positioning your orchid at the edge of the pot does not even apply. That by the time the orchid should grow into the space that we have actually allocated for it, it's time to repot, especially in organic media. The empty space in that pot stays far too wet as well, seeing as there's no roots in there. And the reason I've brought all this up in the first place, as I've been doing this for several years now, is my own personal observation and frustration that I anticipated a direction of growth. I've put the growth right smack against the edge of the pot and then it goes and heads in the opposite direction and I have to intervene again. In the middle of the pot, everything feels much more safer. There is no guessing game. It doesn't reduce the life of the orchid in that pot, especially if you're growing in organic media. It also looks so, so much nicer to have an orchid in the middle of a pot. I don't know about you. Symmetry to me is important. Orchids do not really grow symmetrically, but at least there's a little something, something we can do to make it look somewhat nice. 
I just wanted to bring this up and discuss it with you and move away from what seems to be happening a lot but it really doesn't make much sense to be doing that. There is nothing long-term about an orchid in a pot per se. I hope that this video will help make that conscious call for where you will position your orchids in the pot so that you don't have to intervene prematurely and can leave your orchid well and truly undisturbed as was the plan in the first place. <laughs> and also take away the stress of have I anticipated the next new growth to actually go where I want it to? <laughs> Might as well make it look balanced. Let me know what you think in the comments. Really appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.